Welcome back everybody. Today I'm back with my 43rd update video. Now my update videos go back to 10 past product reviews in order from about a year ago. I'll look back at the original review and also let you know if anything's changed since my original review was posted because I do continue to use a lot of these products after my review is filmed. The products in this video cover number 421 through 430 which is June through August of 2022. Without further delay let's get right to update number 43. Number 421 was the Rock Pals Power Station. And I do have some updated information on that, but first let's flash back to the original review and see how that went. It's a 500 watt power bank that can be powered by this 100 watt solar panel. I got the panels leaning up against the side of my house that's pointing directly at the sun right now. I'll keep adjusting it throughout the day. This iPhone's at 4%. It is plugged directly into the panels. We'll see how long it takes to charge this up on a cloudy day. All right, we went from 3% to 60% in one hour. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Not too bad, really. All right, as you can see, it's at 10% and it is blinking, telling me I need to plug that in. It is showing 56 watts. So once again, I put my solar panel up against the house because it's kind of easy to angle that way. Throughout the day, I'll be repositioning these panels to try to get optimal uh, input. Nine hours total to get 90% charged, which means 10% per hour is accurate. It's freaking reviews, movie night. I got my television out in my backyard. I'm gonna plug it into the Rock Pals, fire it up, and hopefully watch an entire movie while I'm sitting out here. All right, the movie's over, let's check it. All right, still at 68%. That movie was an hour and 10 minutes long, so not a real long movie. Quite a bit of juice left, so I'm kinda happy about that. Real world test here, I'm gonna try to power five devices all at once. We got the television, we've got the floor fan. The iPhone is charging, GoPro is charging both batteries. Coolify is charging. We're only pulling 150 watts, this can go up to 500. All right, we're at the one hour mark, right Bailey? Uh, the television is still going, the fan's still going. The iPhone is at 79%, it started at 15%. Uh, both GoPro batteries are done charging. Looks like the Coolify has gone up to about 87%. We're at 64% after one hour powering all five devices. But I like the solar panel and the power bank. I'm gonna keep using those and I'll let you know over time how it goes. So after my review was posted, some people said, well, you filmed that in the summertime when the sun's brightest. What about the rest of the year? What about fall? What about winter? I took up the challenge and I actually tested it out on the first week of fall and the first day of winter. And here's how that went. All right, the sun has set. Let's see what we got here. 82%, 82% for an entire day. And it is the first week of fall, 82%. All right, Bailey, it's done. Let's check it out. We're at 69%, so it gave us about 59% it still says it's charging a tiny bit with a little bit of sunlight left, but it's sun's pretty much down now. It's the shortest day of the year. We got 59% in about nine hours outside. So keep it in mind that it starts off at 10%. The first week of fall, I got a 72% charge. The first day of winter, I got a 59% charge. So there goes your answer. And I should say, I do use this power station quite a bit. I still use it all the time. I ranked it at number seven in my best of 2022, and I still stand by that because I think the Rock Pals is a good product. Number 422 was the Power XL Duo Nutra Sealer. Now this one, a lot of people did not have the same experience that I did. But let's first flash back to my original view and see how that went. You're supposed to slide this underneath this, uh, this uh, tab right here. It's supposed to stick underneath that tab if you want to vacuum seal it. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's vacuuming. Oh, it's vacuuming. Oh yeah. When you're watching the infomercial, it, I don't hear that sound at all. That sounds pretty loud. All right, we have a beautifully sealed bag with two ears of corn, nicely vacuum sealed. Well, first test, not too bad. They say you can make individual snack packs with this. The first thing you're supposed to do is seal it right down the center. All right, seal only. First set is looking pretty good. I've got a seal in the center, a seal there. These are not going anywhere. Let's see what we got here. All right, we are, we're on a roll here. We're on a roll. Four looks good, six would be pushing it, but I'm pretty happy either way. All right, the next one's kind of a ridiculous demonstration they show in their infomercial, but I'm gonna do it anyways. 
Is this gonna even really prove anything? I don't know, let's try it anyways. Vacuum sealing the iPhone, here we go. Not sure what this proves, but we're gonna do it anyways. Right, I'm submerging the phone in the water. I don't see any bubbles coming up, which is good. That means those airs, no airs getting in there. All right, there's, there's no water on the phone whatsoever. It's completely clean. No drippage, no water, nothing. Oh, it's crushing it. It's crushing it. Ooh. But it, it did crush the cans uh, quite nicely. Oh, wow. Oh, oh yeah. It did not look like it breached the seal area. Look at this, okay. I don't see anything in the unit itself either. So it can do liquids, I'm happy about that. It's not the only game in town. There's a lot of sealers out there. A lot of them can do a lot of the things this one can. All right, so I would say of all the products I've reviewed over the years, all the years I've been doing it, this is the one that my experience has been the most different from the overwhelming majority of people who have contacted me and said they didn't like this product. I'm not sure why my experience is so different. I never really had a lot of the problems other people have reported. A lot of people have reported it. I really don't know what the reason for that is, except for that maybe I got one of the first batches and they changed something during the production. I'm not sure. So even though my experience is pretty good, I would tread lightly if you're looking at this product because a lot of people said it did not work well for them. Number 423 was a comparison of different earplugs. Let's first flash back to how the original review went. And that's where a product like Eargasms or Vibes come in because they offer a cheaper alternative to the very expensive custom fitted earplugs that are available out there. All right, here are all four contenders, the two teams, the cheap versus the expensive. I've used the foam and the silicone earplugs for decades, so I didn't have to test them out too much to know how they work. But I've been using the Eargasms and the Vibes for over three months now. In that time, I've gone to two NHL games, an NBA playoff game, I've flown, I've gone to concerts. I can definitely tell you there's a difference you hear in frequencies between the cheap earplugs and the more expensive ones. The cheap ones kill a lot of the mid-range and the high frequencies while the eargasms and the vibes let more of those go through. Now if you're just comparing the vibes versus the eargasms, one thing about the eargasms is if you don't want to deal with earwax, the vibes would probably be a better choice. Although the vibes do stick out more. I did find myself fiddling around with the eargasms trying to get them in the right spot, although once they were in the right spot, the sound was better. So I concluded in that video that the eargasms were probably the best quality of the bunch. So over the last year, the one I I've used the most has not been the eargasms though, it's been the vibes and there's a reason for that. Although I think the eargasms have the best quality, you kind of have to stick them pretty far into your ear. It's not very comfortable. It's sometimes hard to get right. And if you have earwax, it's gonna shove it back down in there. The vibes more cover the opening rather than go in your ear. So even though the quality wasn't quite as good, I think comfort and convenience to me is worth a slight sacrifice in sound. I think all the earplugs I tried were good, but the ones I used the most have been the vibes. Number 424 was a collection of kitchen gadgets, two of which made my top 10 best of 2022. Let's first flash back to the original review and see how that went. This is the paper towel topper. It looks like it says it keeps your paper towels dry, clean, germ-free. So all we're supposed to do is place it over the paper towel holder like this. Oh, what do you know? It worked. What do you know? Oh, I just did some dishes. I got wet hands. Let's see what we got here. Ah, paper towel is still dry. <laughs> when you open it up, it comes on automatically. So say we're using it right-handed. If you use it left-handed, flip it over and the display flips so you can use it right or left. All right, chef's temp, 206. Tail is still going. Moving over to ice water. Chef's temp down to 34. Taylor on its way down, on its way down and it's getting close. It does stick to the fridge pretty easily, pretty nicely. It kind of floats actually. It seems like it's kind of floating. This is the twist whisk. You go from a regular whisk to a flat utensil with one twist. It's also covered in silicone so it will not scratch your non-stick pans. Well, whisking wise, it just seems like a regular whisk. Let's twist this into the flat configuration. 
What I like about this is that you can use it on the bottom of this non-stick pan without worrying about scratching it because of the silicone covering. This is a lemon and tomato slicer holder. It seems like when you start cutting, it kind of curves it and then you can't get all the way down to the bottom. From my perspective, lining them up like that is actually not that easy. And it also doesn't feel like it's going all the way through. The entire bottom of the tomato is still intact. So we have, we have like a, what is this? That's not gonna work. This is a plastic wrap dispenser. Now I've, I've pushed this down on the counter. I should be able to just pull this across the plate. Should be able to pull it across the plate. Come on, suction cups. Now what we do is cut it. And then we can wrap it. Now the problem with this is the plastic wrap roll is so thick that it won't, it doesn't want to spin and it doesn't want to close. This is not working so well. Pushed over as far as it can go and I cannot push it in there anymore. Two haven't worked, one has. Wax paper. But let's try it on the side of the fridge like they advertise and see how that works. Not going so well. Come on, now, it's, now it feels like it's stuck. Now watch what happens if someone comes in and just yanks on it. Number nine of my best of 2022 was the paper towel topper right here, and I still use it. It's developed a little crack in there, but it gets used pretty much every day. Uh, it's, it's very simple, it's a genius design, and it still gets used every day. I still use the Chef's Temp Thermometer pretty regularly as well. It made number six of my best of 2022. I know it's just a kitchen thermometer, but once you've used this one, it's hard to go back to any others. To me, I think this is a great kitchen thermometer. Number 425 was a nostalgia bacon press. Kind of an unusual looking gadget, and here's how that went. It supposedly allows you to make an entire breakfast in one device, but what you see here is not all done at one time, even though that's what they show in the packaging. This is not heated, this is just a place to drape the bacon when it's cooking. For round number one, I preheated it for about three minutes, loaded it up with some smaller center cut bacon, closed it up and cooked it for about four minutes and the bacon actually turned out pretty well. Put two eggs on one side and warmed up some sausage links on the other. So I put the bacon back on the center rack to kind of try to emulate what the packaging shows. Right, now we close it up. Oh, I'd say it looks, it looks pretty good. Pancake going on. Egg looking good, looking good. All right, we're, we're on a roll here. This looks much better. Look, from round one till now, this is like night and day. All right, this pancake has got to get flipped. Pancake looks done. All right, I think, the, I think the egg is done. I think we're done. We're done with everything. Round three is looking good. I knew I could eventually get it. About 11 minutes total from the time I started preheating till being finished. Not terrible, really. When people see this packaging, they're gonna think you can make all that at once. You don't, you make the bacon and then you make everything else. A lot of people don't like that because they think that it's deceptive. So it's definitely not perfect, but it was some work and a learning curve. I think you can actually make this work. So this is one I did not continue to use. It's just kind of big and clunky. I don't really think it's necessary. Everything that you can make in there, you can just make on the stove top. I don't, I don't really think you need a product like that. It was fun to try, but not something I stuck with long-term. Number 426 was the Fousey Apollo 2 phone protective case. Let's flash back to how my original review went. This was on Shark Tank. It supposedly protects your phone from the heat, the cold, being dropped, and also it floats so it protects it from being dropped in the water. I see a hot spot about 126. It's in the 120s, One in the 120s. All right, here we go. Same spot. We'll leave it here for exactly 30 minutes. It's warmer outside now, so it might be an unfair test, but if it's that good, unfair shouldn't really matter, right? That's ouch. I really don't see much of a difference, to be honest. 30 minutes later, 52%. 30 minutes later. Ooh, 92%. All right, here we go, nine feet. Oh, I don't know if you can see it in this bright sunlight, but the screen is unbroken and it's still on. So I think it's time to move up to a little bit more challenging test and see how that works. All right, much more than 10 feet here. Let's check it out and we have an unbroken screen that still works. I would say that it passed the drop test with flying colors. I'm actually kind of impressed by this. As you can see, the screen looks fine. It still powers on, no problems whatsoever. They don't claim that it's waterproof and it's not, but it does float. So in the end, I would say the Fousey passed three out of four tests. It's pretty good, just not in the heat. So after my review, I decided there was really no need to keep using that product. There was really nothing there for me to continue using, so it ended up in the boneyard. 
Number 427 was a collection of weird kitchen utensils. Let's first flash back to see how that went. This decorative looking fork is actually the Forgetti, which is supposed to help you eat spaghetti more easily. Their packaging shows it pointing upward, which these nubs right here are more geared for holding it facing up than facing down. Facing up, not bad. Facing down, not as good. This is a two pack of a blending fork. It's good for blending, mixing, whisking, and serving. Okay, so I would say sir, as far as a whisk, it certainly would function in that capacity. Oh, it definitely, it's. I can feel that it's much better than using just a regular fork like some people do. Check this out. I can actually put this entire block of ground beef right in there with the blending fork. It's definitely better than a, uh, than a regular fork. I will say that. Serving spaghetti and it was able to grab not only longer spaghetti but shorter ones as well. Here is the Jumbo Fisky, a fork and whisk. I mean, it, it certainly functions as a whisk. I, no no uh, complaints there. You can scoop and serve. Oh yeah. I guess you can't say you have many whisks that can do this. I can feel that it's good at folding this this mix right here. All right, here's the Joseph Joseph Uni Tool. Can you use it to turn items? Apparently you can. There is a serrated edge here. Can I actually use this as a knife? Oh wow, it actually does cut. A pretty a pretty clean cut. Maybe not the cleanest cut ever, but it kind of worked. So while it does work, maybe it's okay in a pinch, but I really wouldn't count on it to replace a knife. Let's see how well this works as a scoop. Uh, not too bad, really. Let's see. When you're holding it like this, you actually have the sharp end where the knife is at right there. That doesn't feel very comfortable. Oh, it does work. It does. It surprisingly works. I wasn't sure if that was going to work, but but it did. The packaging shows it as a slotted spoon for some peas. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at this. It, it does work as a slotted spoon, but it, it's so long, it's hard to get in there. Now, two of these products I continue to use on a semi-regular basis. That's the Jumbo Fisky and the Unitool, but they didn't really replace anything. There is more backup utility tools I keep in my kitchen. If I can't find a spatula or if my whisk is dirty, I might grab them then. So they didn't really replace anything. They're just good general use backup kitchen utensils. Number 428 was the Shark Stratos vacuum. I kind of had fun testing that one out and here's how that went. So let's pit the Golden Retriever versus the Shark and see how it stacks up. Hiya! So we're gonna see how well it does in the grout here for the crevices and we're also gonna see how close it can get to this wall right here. Oh, the crevice did really well. Well, I've got to say over here, I I'm completely shocked that it got that up. We're going to get hair everywhere. Look at this. So it's a hair party here. All right. Smash all this hair in this carpet. I don't see a single hair stuck in there. Now that is pretty impressive. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a pretty low clearance too. Oh, it sounds ugly. It sounds ugly. Oh, oh one flew forward. Oh, we got a little bit left behind. Got a little, got a little bit left behind. Let's go backwards over it. We're gonna be playing on Golden Retriever Pac-Man. The Shark Stratus has successfully completed the Golden Retriever Pac-Man Challenge. If you are, however, looking for a new vacuum and this is within your price range, I would definitely give the Shark Stratus a look. All right, so this is still my go-to vacuum. I use this all the time, gets used multiple times a week. I haven't really had much of a problem with hair, although I do occasionally have to pull hair out of there, but it's much less than other vacuums. It's held up well, it's a workhorse to me. I'm a big fan of the Shark Stratus. Number 429 was a spy pin. This one looked pretty interesting until I tried it and then it wasn't so interesting anymore. Check it out. There seems to be absolutely no stabilization whatsoever as you'll see later. So I went into a convenience store last night for my first test and I walked through there and I'll show you what that looked like. But all I filmed was the ceiling the entire time because it's in my pocket. I thought it was gonna film straight ahead. It's actually filmed straight up. First test of the spy pin. Let's see how it works. I am in the shade right now with a pen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn a little bit and you can see how the pen looks in different lighting conditions. And let me switch over the audio for the pens. You can hear how the, audio, the pen audio sounds outdoors because there is some kind of ambient sounds out here. Here's the outdoor sounds of the pen. How does that sound? Let me go out in the sunlight and see how that looks. 
All right, so now I'm in the direct sunlight. How's the pen look? I'm holding it steady. The pen should be looking right at me, hopefully. So starting now, pen vlog. So in the end, it does record audio and video, so I will say that it does that, although it doesn't do either one very well. So yeah, after my review, I realized there was really no point in continuing to use this one, so this one ended up in the boneyard. Number 430 was a comparison of the Lizard Flare with an Amazon equivalent. This is what I've been looking forward to for a year because I had a new test to show you for this one. But let's first flash back to the original review and see how that went. This is the ASEAN TV Lizard Flare. It advertises a rugged roadside flare without the flame. And this is a version I found on Amazon that looks a lot like it. Both of them have 15 lights, 12 around the perimeter and three in the center here. Both have nine light patterns. Both say they can be seen from a mile away. Here we go. Oh, he gone. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh wait, they're working again. They're kind of working. Oh, I think they're actually gonna work. But by hour three, the lizard flare was starting to get a little bit more dim. It was dimmer by the five hour mark, even dimmer by the six hour mark. And by seven hours, it was barely lit at all. But also by the seven hour mark, the Amazon had actually run out of juice. All right, the lights are here and Brandon, it's way down there. Can you see me holding up a light? Yes, I can see it with my naked eye. Really? Let me try the other one. Hold on. I got a different one. I... This one? Yep. You see that one better? Okay. That's a different pattern. Let me try the, the same pattern on both of them. Oh, you can see it. Can you see both of them? Yep, I can see it naked eye and video. Sweet. See you guys in the morning. Bailey's very curious of how it's going to look today. All right, here we go. That's pretty cold. Now for the big test. Are they, they going to work? And they work. Even though this one lasts longer, I think brightness is probably more important in most cases than a long dim light. All right, here we go. After my review is over, I charged one of each of these up, put them in my closet, and this is the first time I've touched them since then. I'm not sure if they're gonna work, but if they do, I'm gonna see how long they last. First up, the Lizard Flare. Oh, it works, it works. I'm gonna put it on the solid setting. Wow, it does still work. Now for the Amazon, I'm assuming it will still work. It still works too. So they're both on the non-blinking mode. I've got my stopwatch set. Let's see how long these two last after sitting for a year charged up without being used. Got my stopwatch going. We'll check back and see how long it lasts. All right, so after the first hour, both of them still look pretty good. By hour number two, both still hanging in there. By hour three, the lizard flare was starting to get a little bit dim. Definitely dim by the four hour mark and it was pretty much out by five and a half hours. And I noticed around the six and a half hour mark, the Amazon had also gone out. So neither one of them lasted quite as long a year later, but the Amazon still landed on top. Well, that's it for this update video. This was a pretty good bunch. Four of these items were actually in my top 10 best of 2022. So it was a pretty good bunch of products for this update. If you've used any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I'll be back in about another month with my next update video. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.